Welcome to the Baker Roundtable. The topic of discussion for today is the seven Baker football players who have spent their spring doing workouts at NFL Combines across the country. Today I have Baker University head football coach Mike Grossner and Baker receiver Reggie Harris. Coach, first off, you don't hear a lot of news about NAIA players getting to that uh, NFL competition level. What does that say about this program and these players? Well, I, you know, these guys are motivated to continue and play football. It tells me a lot that uh, they enjoy their experience at Baker. Mm -hmm. uh, we developed them pretty good, and they're, they're now going to attempt to take it to that next level. So, you know, I look at it as, hey, for our program, these guys are out there getting our school exposure, themselves some exposure, and hopefully a chance to continue and play ball. But also it tells me we're recruiting pretty good football players. You know, if we've got seven kids out there attempting to make some type of league, uh, we're, we're doing a good job of profiling guys and developing them. And one of those football players is Reggie Harris. And Reggie, you uh, spent some time at the Chiefs Pro Day uh, and did a little bit of, uh, of work out there. Tell me about that experience. It was definitely a surreal experience. I mean, as a kid growing up, you always watch your favorite hometown team and when you actually get to go to their practice facility, it's just kind of, you know, breathtaking. But at the same time, you realize you're there to make a statement. And I think I did that quite well. Now, you got to see Division One players, Division Two players. How do you feel you and your teammates stack up against those athletes? Well, I think that people shouldn't be, you know, judging our ability based on our division. Because especially at that Chiefs Combine, the Chicago Combine that I went to, there were a lot of athletes there that were just as you know athletic and talented as I was there were obviously some better and some worse but you know you couldn't really tell what division we all were in based on our abilities so that was good to know. Now coach you've seen athletes at every level of play what is it going to take for an NAIA athlete to make that jump and be at that NFL level? Uh, I've always said and I've told these guys in their recruiting pits there's a fine line between NAIA, JUCO, Division One, I, Division Two, I, one AA and it's what, how they develop, you know. Uh, there's certain measurables. I mean, they're going to look at the clock. That's going to measure a guy like Reggie as a receiver. Mm -hmm. They're going to look at a guy like Joel and make sure he's, his weight and height are fit the category. But uh, in general, once you get to that level, there's not a lot of difference. And I've gone to a lot of pro camps OTAs and, and preseason stuff when these guys, rookies are coming out and they join the veterans and uh, you, you can't tell sometimes a rookie or a veteran, but, but you have a roster in front of you and you look at a kid and he might be from a North Dakota mm -hmm. and then you're looking at a Jeff Saturday, a veteran center. I'm comparing what I saw this year at the Packer camp. Well, there was a rookie from a small division two school that fit. And like I told Reggie, he's going to find out early. I mean, he, he's already been to these combines. He's gone and, and, and ran in front of the Chiefs. Now he knows, okay, I fit. Now when I get my opportunity, wherever it may be, I've got to shine. You know, I, I can't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Because in general, they're going to look at it possibly, and this is, this is where it comes out, they're going to look at a guy from Baker University a, a little bit different than a guy from Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. And they're going to give that Notre Dame guy a little more slack. They're not going to give the Baker University young man a whole lot of slack. And so that's going to be the difference for these guys. When they get to that camp, they've got to prove it right away and, and then develop within that system. Now, Reggie, you're not a typical receiver as far as size. Coming in about 5'8", I, I assume. Mm -hmm. Have you had to change your game at all coming from the NAIA level to the NFL level to try to adapt and, and meet the requirements? Well, I can't really say anything. The only thing that really has changed a lot is my work ethic. It's gotten more, it's gotten to a higher level. You know, when you realize that you might have already played your last football game and you want to keep playing, you've got a su such a higher worth, work ethic and a determination. Like, especially if you want to make this the rest of your life for as long as you can, you put everything into it. One Baker football player that's had success is uh, receiver Kyle Bolton. He ran a 4-2-9-40 at uh, Combine in Dallas, the Super Regional Combine. Coach, what kind of impact do you see uh, Kyle having in the NFL? Uh, you know, that's a good story. We, 
We're not into timing these guys in 40s. I have a concern they're going to pull a hamstring. Are they ready to run that? Mm -hmm. You know, we did a little more timing this spring, but I always wondered what Kyle could run. I wanted him to run track here because I knew he was the fastest kid in the hack. And, but he didn't enjoy track and field. And, and so we never got a true time on him. So I was excited when he went to that combine. I, I text him, I, I want to know what he, he's going to run that day. And he pops a 429. A 429 anywhere. I don't care what division. That's an eye opener. He was the fastest kid at that combine. And, and that really opened a lot of eyes and a lot of teams' eyes on him. They're now, they're now saying, okay, can this guy be the guy that takes, a, takes the top off for us? Uh, does he have the ability to catch the ball inside like the Wes Welker uh, type receiver? So, you know, like I said, the clock's important in their position. And now, you know, he's getting some play. He got himself an agent, which you need to do, so they can promote you. And, and now some teams are interested. And, I, and I've heard Seattle, Chicago, and the Vikings are uh, the ones really calling him. And, and hopefully, like I said, he lands, and now it's up to him to do his part. Now, what is the next step for him? He's got the agent. He's got the, the teams in place. Where does he go from here? He's just waiting on a phone call. Okay. He's staying in shape, and uh, the draft's right around the corner. And, you know, right after the draft, there's going to be a lot of phone calls for these guys, hopefully. And it's going to be, hopefully, the perfect situation. They get in a plane, they arrive, and now they got to shine. All right. Reggie, what's the next step for you at this point? Um, my next step is getting an agent. And okay. then after that, I've got a um, Canadian Football League tryout in May. And we're going to see where that goes. But until then and after that, I'm going to graduate and still work out, try to stay in shape. Well, we wish you the best of luck with that. Uh, Coach, one final thought. For these guys that don't make it their first time, don't get an offer uh, the first time through the combines, what advice do you have for them for the future? Uh, I was there a long time ago. And there's a, it's exciting, uh, you know, and, and the, the main thing I, I try to preach to these guys, you got to lay your head on, on your pillow at night and know you, you gave it your best. And one, once that situation is over, when it may be right away or five years from now, now have yourself set up for the rest of your life. Don't, don't uh, if, if something comes along that, that you've uh, gone to, you know, school for and it's a perfect chance to to jump into your profession you've got a way right there there's there's big decisions in life and these are a few of them but have yourself prepared in both areas and and I love it I love that these guys are attacking this and uh and going for it because down the road they can like I said put that to rest when it may be and hopefully they make a lot of money and set themselves up and then use this degree that they've received here and uh, have a great life and, and all that comes with that. So uh, I, I'm just, from a standpoint of watching these guys chase their dream, uh, I've always been that positive guy that says, hey, uh, you know, don't tell them you can't do it. Go, go, go prove you can, and, and uh, hopefully the situation arises for you. Well, there's obviously something that's going right on the home front as well as far as Baker football, so that's a, a good compliment for the team and for you as well, Coach. Uh, thank you, Head Coach Mike Grossner and to receiver Reggie Harris for coming on for this week's Baker Roundtable. We'll be right back.